It doesn't matter if Aaron Rodgers is coming back to the New York Jets next year. The New York Jets need to draft their face of the franchise quarterback. And I'm going to show you why it could be Quinn Ewers. New York Jets, Quinn Ewers, film breakdown. Let's get it. All right, y'all know how this go, man. Before we get started, don't forget to make sure y'all like. And if you have a comment, man, make sure to drop any comment and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel at The Draft Network. We about to get into it, man. Show why Quinn Ewers could be a good situation for the New York Jets. And first, I just want to talk about this, right? We know that the New York Jets have... They have some things they need to complete, right? They have holes in their offense. They have holes on the defensive side of the football. And so I chose Quinn Ewers because I'm like, hey, could this be a guy that you could potentially grab not in the first round, right? Does he get drafted in the second round, in the third round? But regardless, like I said, the New York Jets need to start preparing for the future. And so we're going to go through Quinn Ewers and why he could be a good fit with the New York Jets. Let's get into this film. Now, man, here we go. We have Quinn Ewers in the shotgun, right? We have motion uh, by the wide receiver to make it a three-by-one situation. And then the pause right here, right? He stops. Boom. Man indicator, right? And I think that's what he was showing. That's why that was drawn up. And then you see the slot wide receiver. He's going to get the football. I'm going to rewind it. Why did I put this play in here, right? And with the New York Jets watching the offense, right, it seems as though the layups, right? The layups are not there, the easy thing. You have Devontae Adams, you have Garrett Wilson, right? Two of the better um, sl slant runners, right? Route runners, release package, right? They have all of the goods, but the timing and anticipation is not there. And that's supposed to be the layups. That's supposed to be the easy throws, especially with two raw receivers of that ilk. So we're going to look at it right here. This is the matchup we're looking at. Boom, like I said, the wide receiver going in motion probably gives Quinn Ewers an indicator that this is man, and so he knows where he's going right now. Clearing out defenders, clearing them out the way, boom. Jab, step, top, boom. First down, right? And one thing that he does really good here is that you see quarterbacks, and at times, right, especially with a slant right here, they'll throw this football flat, right? They'll throw it flat right in here. And what happens is, is that you guide the wide receiver to the middle of the field one, right, potentially the more defenders, but also you don't lead them upfield, right? And that's easy. where you want to go, right? That's where the end zone is. And so you see where Quinn Ewers puts this football, and he puts it upfield, and that's a great thing, right? He puts it upfield, boom, and you see the wide receiver is able to get upfield. And so potentially five-yard play turns into a first down. And that's the chain-moving type things that the New York Jets need, right? They need to hit the layups. Hit the simple things. And Quinn Ewers, one thing about him, he's played a lot of football. He has a lot of time and anticipation to his game, right? He's not a guy that's just going to rely strictly on arm strength. And we've seen in the NFL, arm strength is not the only thing that gets the job done, right? There's a reason why Brock Purdy, um, you know, he went in the seventh round. People knocked him for his arm strength. But there's a reason why he's playing really good football. And I'm saying that I believe that Quinn Ewers could be more talented than Brock Purdy. Here we go. Another three-by-one set. We had motion by the tight end. And then you're going to see he's going to be activated in the play. So, boom, they motion one guy, then they motion another guy. So, now it ends up being a two-by-two two set right here. Now, this route being ran, right, and you'll see, I'll show, I'll show you guys after the play, um, and you'll see the wide receiver kind of tap because I wasn't sure, right? I wasn't sure if they decided to run scissors at the top of their route, but I'm going to highlight the wide receiver right here real quick, um, and we'll get to the actual result. But the play design wasn't necessarily there, but that's a, a, a old two – Quinn Ewers because he didn't panic. And you'll see the wide receiver. You see he taps his shoulder, taps his shoulder pads, right? And say, hey, that one kind of on me. And that lets you know just in the midst of things in chaotic situations, Quinn Ewers is not going to be one of those guys that panic, right? Because how many quarterbacks do we have that the minute that one wide receiver doesn't want to route, that they start to panic? And you can see Quinn Ewers, he starts, boom. He looks at, at the right side of the screen, right? He's, he's analyzing the play. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to work backside. And as I'm working backside, I'm realizing that my wide receiver is running the wrong route. Boom. But you have the tight end right here. He fits the ball in a really good spot, right? Because the thing is this. If he continues to float this ball this way, right, it comes this way, continues to float it this way, one, out of bounds. But two, this defender, you're running into this defender. He has more of an opportunity to get the hand get his hands on the football, but what happens is he throws them flat, and that's exactly where you want him to be, right? Throw them flat, so then that way, boom, he can get the football in there, fit it into tight windows. That's why we see what playing quarterback is about accuracy, right? Accuracy, anticipation, you've seen both of those with Quinn Ewers on this plate. Boom. 
Next play up here, we have a motion situation, right? Once again, we see Quinn Ewers analyzing the play, right? And we see that it looks like the defense is playing cover two, right? I, they, I feel like they're playing two different things um, on both sides of the formation. But at the bottom, it looks like cover two. You see the corner, he winds up sitting, right? He's sitting in this area, jumping on anything short. Quinn Ewers is reading it. He says, okay, cool. You're, you're staying short. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this ball and this is a cover two beater. I'm going to throw it right in the hole right there. Boom. He hits it. Move the change, right? And that's what we talked about the New York Jets. The simple things. If we got to split the field in half, right, and we just have to work one half at a time, let's do that. And you see the, that Quinn Ewers is doing that at, at a good level right now. And it's not about being a superstar all the time, right, and showcasing and making the wild plays. It's about, like I said, once again, hitting the layups, hitting the mid-range, and let's keep this offense going. Boom. Here we go. What are we going to do? I know I have a double move call, right? This is a big play opportunity right here. We have one-on-one -on -one with a safety. And guess what? Any OC is probably taking this shot right here. If you have a double move opportunity, one-on-one -on -one with this safety, right? Quinny, Quinny Ewers knows it. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make sure that I sell it. And while I'm going to sell it, I'm going to pump fake. So watch Quinn Ewers right up here. Watch the arm action, right? Watch Quinn Ewers and watch how he sells this thing. I'm going to stare him down on purpose, give him a double move, and I'm pushing vertical. I'm pushing vertical, and he hits the wide receiver in his hands. And I can't help but think of Garrett Wilson. I can't help but think of Devontae Adams, right, and these wide receivers that the New York Jets have and how this can, can help tremendously just being able to hit the accurate stuff, taking, taking like I said, the mid-range, taking the deep shots, and then kind of all being on the same page and getting the football to the wide receivers because the New York Jets at this moment – it's just sputtering too much, right? It's just not enough good stuff going on. I put this play in here because this could be another situation to where, hey, it's like, okay, how does this apply to potentially to the New York Jets situation? You have basically clear out routes by these wide receivers underneath, right? If they're there, we're taking them not. Boom. But clearing them out, look at all this green grass that this wide receiver has, right? And I think about, you look at the wide, the wide receivers that the New York Jets have, right? Malachi Corley, who was drafted uh, to the New York Jets last year, really good run after the catch player. So you tell me if you get two guys going vertical and you have Malachi Corley coming on an underneath route, you put him in a run after the catch situation, he's able to get upfield, get vertical, and pick up extra yardage. And that's why I say that's how that applies, right? It's just utilizing these different playmakers, looking at Quinn Ewers, what he does well. We can see that he's an accurate quarterback, right? He understands the details and the nuances of the football game, and that's why I believe that he could potentially be a good fit for the New York Jets. Here we go. Next play right here. Once again, the New York Jets, I'll let it play. You have one-on-one -on -one right here. The New York Jets have two of the better receivers, potentially the best wide receiver in the NFL and Devontae Adams. And then Garrett Wilson, when you think about his release package, right, and how he's able to beat uh, cornerbacks at the line of scrimmage at the very beginning, you have two of the best right here. So you just need them to win one-on-one -on -one at the line of scrimmage, throw an accurate pass, touchdown, right? And, and that's, like I said, the, the big explosive plays, that's why they're that's why they're not happening. It's just simply taking care of the one-on-one -on -one situations. You can't double Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams both, right? Quinn Ewers, he throws an accurate football. He can push the ball vertical. He can identify coverages. He has high IQ. So once again, it's like, okay, how would this apply? Last year, Brees Hall coming out of the backfield, right? And that was why people were high on him because he was showing his ability to catch the football. Simple angle route, Texas route, curl route, out of circle route, out of the backfield for the for the running back. Let's just take the layups once again. Boom. One-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, beats him, gets upfield. Brees Hall can definitely do that at a high level. So I'm looking at just this Texas offense, first of all, but then I'm also looking at how... Quinn Ewers could potentially fit with the New York Jets and the playmakers that they have. It's just getting the details and the nuances right. And like I said, we don't know if Quinn Ewers is going in the first round, but potentially second, third round, you're able to move around, move draft picks, move around and get Quinn Ewers. I think he's a guy that you can get him regardless if Aaron Rodgers is coming back. I think it's actually a plus that you can draft Quinn Ewers if he can sit one year behind Aaron Rodgers. And then now you're able to pass the torch to a guy who's played a lot of football in college, played in high leverage moments, and has showed high level play so Quinn Ewers New York Jets it's a potential draft fit for me that's face of the franchise film breakdown Quinn Ewers the New York Jets